Hello everyone, welcome back to another SUP Border video. My name's Will and this time we're going to look at one of the fastest growing disciplines and interest areas in paddleboarding today, SUP touring and exploring. In this multi-part SUP Border how-to series, we're going to guide you through the steps of becoming a SUP tourer and explorer. In part one, we look at what SUP touring is and how you guys can get involved. This series is going to cover many, many more subjects, including how to plan a route, what you should take, how to pack, before we finally take you on your first SUP touring trip, video blog style. We've been really excited to pull this series together as many of you guys and girls have been asking for more information on touring. We'll also be producing some exclusive videos for our SUP Border Pro subscribers, which will be a must see if you're getting into touring and exploring. So look out for those special features as a part of SUP Border Pro. So what is SUP touring and exploring all about? Well, it's all about the adventure. Exploring new places, going on a trip, seeing what's around the corner, going on some sort of expedition. You may have learned to SUP on the sea or on a lake or enjoyed developing your skills in that location, but now you want to push yourself that little bit further and get exploring in your local area or perhaps somewhere further afield. To help you understand what SUP touring is and if it's for you, we've answered the top frequently asked questions. There's no rules on how long your SUP tour needs to be. It could be for one hour, one night, one week, or even more. Let your spirit of adventure guide you. If you're spending a little bit longer on the water than your normal session, you might want to consider a few more pieces of equipment, such as food, water, and perhaps your wallet. And if you're going on an overnight trip, there's much more to consider again to set you up for making sure that you're self-sufficient overnight. SUP touring and exploring is really for all abilities. You just have to be realistic about your level of paddling and apply that to the type of touring and exploring you're planning to do. For example, the further and longer you want to go SUP touring for, the better your paddle and board skills need to be to ensure you'll be able to go the distance. There's nothing to stop you going on a coastal or inland waterway tour as soon as you have sufficient paddle and board skills, provided you understand the risks involved and take the relevant safety precautions. Different types of water present many different risks and challenges that you might not see at your home, spot, club or SUP school. SUP touring will take you outside of the protection of the risk assessments in your SUP school, so you need to be prepared to take responsibility for your own safety and perhaps those less experienced that you might be paddling with. Stand-up paddleboarding is amazing because it's so, so accessible. You can paddle on a sea, a lake, a canal, estuary or river. You can go SUP touring anywhere you could do with general round paddling but you just need to be aware of how to keep safe on the type of water type you're touring on. If you're touring larger distances, you might need to be aware of a few other things than your general all-round paddling, such as access on canals and rivers, and winds, tides and currents on coastal waters. But don't be fooled that inland waterways and lakes are much less risky than the coast. Each presents its own risks that you need to understand. There's really no rules on who you should go with, but you can go on a solo adventure and push your own limits if that suits you, or you can go as a group. Personally, I've done both, and they're both extremely fulfilling in their own ways. Solo touring and exploring means you can often get away from everything and push your own physical and mental boundaries. Yet going on an adventure as a group can also be great fun, allowing you to learn from others in the group and have a really sociable time. Don't forget to consider the use of multi-person boards as well. They offer a slightly different element to touring and exploring and can be great to help develop a paddling partner's confidence if they're not so happy to go on their own board, but also allow families to go and paddle together as well. You can go SUP touring on any SUP. Don't think you can't go touring if you don't have a specific SUP touring board. If you're serious about SUP touring, a specific touring board will help you in a number of different ways. They're designed with the requirements of SUP tourers in mind, such as being longer to aid with glide and have tie down points to enable you to carry all the kit that you might need to carry. We'll cover more about the different types of boards and equipment in later parts of this series. 
sup touring generally needs a little bit of planning. You need to have an idea of where you're trying to go, make sure you have the kit, food and water for the time you're out there. And since you're not necessarily planning on paddling to a place you are familiar with, you need to scope out the area and be content you are going to be safe, particularly if you're leading less experienced paddlers. You may need to look at the weather, particularly if your touring adventure is taking you more than one day. We will guide you through specifics on planning and packing in later parts of this series. The key is to start small and get more adventurous as you gain confidence. I like to try and push myself on every SUP tour I go on, just a little bit, be that location, distance or some other unknowns. If you're just getting started, look in your local area and see if there's a canal or slow moving river you can paddle on and find a bar or restaurant for lunch or take a picnic. If you are struggling for inspiration, there's plenty of touring and exploring content on Supwater that will show you what's possible. Just look for the touring and exploring icon in the main menus. You can always check out GeoSup mobile app as well. This app allows you to search for touring and exploring sessions near you to get inspiration or ideas of where you can paddle, as well as tips on access and safety. The community of GeoSup users are always ready to help. Going SUP touring and exploring doesn't mean you have to go camping and take a tent. Personally, I find camping makes the trip much more adventurous, but some people just don't want to have to camp. You can always plan a day paddle. It's still SUP touring. Better still, with the benefit of very transportable ice ups, you could also plan a one-way paddle. You can take a bus, taxi, or even a plane home at the end of the day. Furthermore, if you do your planning really correctly, you could SUP tour in luxury, staying in hotels and B&Bs en route. The possibilities are just endless. Camping on your trip just means that you can be more flexible, and apart from finding a suitable place to pitch up at the end of the day, your progress isn't constrained by anything. SUP touring and exploring is as challenging as you want to make it, depending on how hard you want to push yourself. A lot of the enjoyment is pushing your own mental and physical boundaries, as well as seeing new places and enjoying the outdoors. Some of the first challenges you will face when traveling longer distances is fitness and endurance. Getting the right board and paddle combination will really help with this. Planning your route, including understanding the risks of weather and the water type, planning what to take and how to pack it will be the biggest challenge, particularly when planning an overnight trip with camping and all the other equipment. You need to understand how to become more self-sufficient, how to plan and how to pack it onto the board. We're going to cover a lot of that in the later parts of the series. So that's up touring and exploring and how you can get involved. We really hope you found this SUP board how-to video interesting and informative. And please stay tuned for the rest of the SUP touring how-to series coming soon. Don't forget to check out our mobile app GeoSUP as well as supboardermag.com for more touring and exploring inspiration. And as normal, any comments and suggestions, please throw them in the boxes below.